Hey guys, Eddie the Magic Monk here. Um, you might have found that with Phaser we need to do quite a bit of coding for something quite simple. Uh, but the good thing about it is that later on when you want to do something more complicated or more customized, um, all of this uh, detail that you have learned recently will really help you. So what I want to do now is I want to slowly advance you guys into being able to fire bullets. Um, but before we do that, I just want to talk a little bit about the timing of things. So right now, um, we don't have anything that um, displays anything on the screen for the game time. So what I want to do now is I want to define a function called render okay and the render function um, comes after the update function so I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna say function render bracket and what this render function does is basically we want to call it after the update function so after the update function I have a render function which is going to be called after the uh, update function is called so it's still going to be called every single frame but it's mostly to do with displaying things on the screen rather than dealing with uh, the physics and the collision detection and all that stuff so what I want to display on the screen is simply some information about the time okay the time of uh, how how long my game has been running for so the way we do that is we put in here game dot debug dot text okay game dot debug dot text basically just lets you to display some text on our game so let's just display hello okay let's not display anything else just hello and let's say where we want to display it we want to display it at um, 50 pixels <clears throat> from the left and 50 pixels from the top so if I run this game now you will see that it says hello in the top left here 50 pixels from the left and 50 pixels from the top so instead of just saying hello I want it to say uh, time elapsed and let's put a colon and I want it to say plus so right now I'm using some uh, string operations this is for adding two strings together and game dot time dot now which is um, or you'll see it in a second so if I run this now you will see that it displays in milliseconds how long it's been since we started our game and you might think it's a bit useless right now but we will be using that soon to time our bullets okay so if you refresh it starts counting from the beginning number of milliseconds so if you only look at the digit at the front that's basically how many seconds so what we want to do is we since we're talking about debugging we might as well debug some other things so we can also make it tell us more so game.debug.text tell us more about our player object so instead of dot text we can say dot sprite info and let's do our player object and again you need to display it a little bit uh, uh, display it further from the top so let's do 50 uh, let's do 100 okay so the 100 is how many pixels from the top so if I press F12 you can see here it now tells me a bit about where I am so it tells me that my sprite is 48 by 48 in size 
I'm currently located at four, uh, 426 uh, pixels from the left, 320 pixels from the top and it tells you what your angle is, what your rotation is. So your rotation is basically your angle in radians. If you're familiar with high school maths, um, 360 degrees is equal to about uh, 6.28 radians. Um, so it tells you uh, Actually, that's about it. So let's um, let's now talk a little bit about adding a group into your game. So um, if I was going to add bullets, okay, um, I need to firstly add the picture first. So I would be doing game dot load dot image. And let's say I want the bullet, and I also need to find out the address of a picture that I can use. So here's a picture of a bullet. Um, here's a picture of a bullet, and um, so there's the picture loaded into my game. But because I know that I'm going to have multiple bullets. Okay, I'm going to have multiple bullets, so later on when I insert it, uh, firstly, when I'm naming things, I'm now going to call them bullet sprite. Okay, just so that I know that this is the sprite. So, later on when I'm creating objects, okay, when I am inserting the bullets so after the player after the alien let's say I want to insert the bullets here so let's uh, set up the bullets here oops um, and what we want to do is we want to give this group a name so let's call it uh, bullets equals game dot add dot group so we've added a whole group into our game and later on if we want to um, edit something to do with bullets we will simply refer to the whole group of bullets instead of a single bullet so what I can do is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in bullets dot enable body equals true and you won't know what that means until I type the next line. So bullets dot physics body type equals phaser dot physics dot arcade. And what th these two lines mean is that every single individual uh, child of our group is going to have a physics body type of arcade so basically if you guys remember here I have enabled the uh, player objects with the arcade physics system these two lines will automatically do it for every single child object of our group Okay, and um, how many uh, how many objects are we gonna have as part of our part of our um, group? So you can say we want to create uh, multiple bullets, and we want to create let's say fifty of them from the sprite bullet sprite okay from that picture we're gonna create 50 bullets um, and because individually we haven't said where we want to position them so they're all currently hidden and not part of our game and let's uh, go bullets dot set all bracket um, check world bounds 
true. So what this means is we're going to check whether they're within our level, okay, within our layout. And if they are within our layout, that's great. Otherwise, if they're not part of our layout, we will kill them, which means they're dead. They're dead objects. And there are things that we can do to dead objects, and there are things we can do to objects that are alive, but we will talk more about them later. But right now, because they're not within our world, they're not within the level, so they're all dead, right? According to this, so they're all dead. So if you play the game right now, right? Basically, um, nothing's going to happen because, uh, but because we haven't said anything for the bullets to show up, so they're just all dead right now. Okay, so. Well, why did we do all this? Because now we want them to show up. Okay, now we actually want the bullets to show up. So, let's add in a key for when we want the bullets to show up. So, let's go fire key equals. All right, and let's copy and paste all of this. But instead of um, the right key, I'm going to go space bar. Alright, because when I press the space key, um, space bar, it's gonna fire. So, fire key, K is capital. Yep. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is in the update function, when I press the space bar, so I'm gonna start another if statement. So, fire the bullet with the space bar. So, I'm gonna go if the fire key is pressed I'm gonna run this function called fire and obviously it hasn't been defined yet so I need to go down to create another function so function fire and I need to say what the fire function is gonna do and what I'm gonna do is So when um, the function is called, what I want to do is I want to create a new variable called bullet and this variable is going to refer to the first bullet in our bullets group that is not in the screen, not on the screen. So bullets.getFirstDead. So whichever the first bullet is that is dead right now, we're going to refer to that bullet. And we're going to set the position of that bullet to where the player is. So player.x and player.y. So that's going to set the bullet to that location. And then what we want to do And since we have just spawned some bullets, okay, we have brought them back to life and we have set them to where the player is, we have now some live bullets that I'm going to um, keep count, keep track of. So I'm going to game.debug.text, Right, and I'm going to show how many bullets are on the screen. So I'm going to show active bullets or alive bullets. And I'm going to go bullets dot count living. So that will count how many bullets are on the screen. And I'm also going to um, put that at uh, 50 from the left and let's say uh, 100 from the top and I'm gonna get rid of this sprite info because I don't really care about my player right now so if I save this and run the game okay what's gonna happen is you can see I have my game here and if I press space 
it screws up. Hang on a second. So I made a mistake over here. It should be bullet dot reset, not set. Okay, reset. Uh, press F12 again. Uh, let's see now if I press space. Yep. So it spawns a bullet where I'm sitting. But if you have a look, okay, at how many bullets. If I press space, every time I press space, multiple bullets are spawned. Okay, and it gets to 50 really quickly, and then if I try to spawn any more, the game is frozen. Okay, the game is frozen, because I've only created 50 bullets, so when you want to spawn some other bullets, the game stops moving. So basically, all I have now is... Uh, I just press refresh, by the way, so when I press space... When I press space, it'll spawn some bullets, and then when I get to 50, the game hangs. Okay, so I'll teach you guys how to fix that in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching, see you next time.